Hi, everybody. So I want to take the discussion of congruences a little bit farther than is covered in the book and uh, partly to show what it's used for. Uh, so I'm going to prove a little result from arithmetic called casting out nines, which you may have learned in elementary school or in which you can tell if a number is divisible by three or by nine by taking the sum of its digits. And if the sum of the digits is divisible by nine, then the number is divisible by nine. Um, and this is a nice, simple application of uh, congruences, but we need to do uh, a little bit of groundwork first. So the groundwork um, has to do with the uh, what I'm calling congruence arithmetic. And so I'm going to start with a little bit of a little lemma, which says that if you have an if, if n is a natural number, and x and y are integers, and if n divides x and n divides y, then n divides x plus y. And I've written this in a much more compact notation here. I've just said if x and y are multiples of n, so is x plus y. The proof of this is just if x is a multiple of n, then x is kn for some k. And y is, let's call it jn for some j. So x plus y is kn plus jn, which is k plus jn. So x plus y is also a multiple of n. So if you have a multiple of two, add two multiplies, multiples of five together, you get a multiple of five. Add two multiples of 31 together, you get a multiple of 31. So that's, uh, I'm going to use that. So the, the reason I called this section congruence arithmetic is because I want to show that you can kind of do, uh, if you have, uh, that congruence behaves like an equal sign in some ways. If you do the same thing to both sides of a congruence, then it's still a congruence. So the, the proposition here is I have integers a, b, c, I should add d, and a natural number n. And I suppose that a and b are congruent mod n. Then if you have another pair of integers which are congruent mod n, so c is congruent to d mod n, then um, if you add the two congruences together, so you've got a plus b, sorry, a, b, a, a is congruent to b mod n, and c is congruent to d mod n, and you add these congruences together like you would with an equality, and you have a plus c congruent to b plus d mod n, that this is still true. It's still a congruence. And the proof of this is you just apply the definition of congruence. So the, the definition of congruence says that, um, well, we know that a minus b is a multiple of n. And we know that c minus d is a multiple of n. That's what a being congruent to b mod n and c being congruent to d mod n means. And now, therefore, we know that a minus b plus c minus d is a multiple of n. That's the lemma. If you add two multiples of n together, you get a multiple of n. And now we just rearrange this. This is equal to a plus c minus b plus d. And therefore, a plus c is congruent to b plus d mod n. So if you have a congruence, you can add, add two congruences together. They'll st uh, still be the same congruence. It's very important that it's the same n, by the way. Uh, you can't just add random congruences together. But if their congruences mod the same base, then you can add them together. And similarly, if you multiply both sides, I, you could I could have proved that if you multiply both sides of a congruence, you can multiply congruences together, but I really only need the situation where you multiply both sides of a congruence by the same thing. So you start with a congruent to b mod n, and you multiply both sides by c, and that's still a congruence. And the proof of this is 
Well, you just take AC minus BC, and you see that is C times A minus B. And since A minus B is a multiple of N, it tells you that A minus B is KN for some K. And therefore, AC minus BC is C times K times N, which is a multiple of N. And therefore, AC is congruent to BC mod N. Okay, so you can add congruences together and you multiply both sides of a congruence and you still have a congruence. I need one more thing, which is you can take a power. You can raise both sides of a congruence to a po positive power. And for this, I need another little lemma from algebra. There are other ways to prove this, but this is maybe the fastest. And, and maybe you know this. I mean, everybody knows, I hope, that x squared minus y squared is x minus y times x plus y. And you may have seen in calculus that x cubed minus y cubed is x minus y times x squared plus xy plus y squared. And in fact, there's a rule for any power. If you take x to the r minus y to the r, that's x minus y times x to the r minus 1 plus x to the r minus 2y plus x to the r minus 3y squared plus, plus dot dot dot, and you end with y to the r minus 1. And uh, the proof of this is just done by multiplication. Namely, if you take x to the r minus 1 plus x to the r minus 2y plus dot 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 plus y to the r minus 1, and you multiply it times x minus y, you get x, first do the x, x to the r, plus x to the r minus 1y, plus x to the r minus 2y squared, plus dot, 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 and you end up at x, y to the r minus 1. And now multiply by minus y, and you get minus x, to the r minus 1 y minus x to the r minus 2 y squared minus minus x y to the r uh, this should be r yeah minus x y to the r minus 1 minus y to the r so you notice what happens here is all these middle terms cancel out and you're just left with x to the r minus y to the r so uh, that's a little algebraic fact. And from that, we get the proof of the uh, proposition because what it tells us is that a to the r minus, we need to know is a to the r minus b to the r divisible by m, by n, if a minus b is divisible by n. But if a to the r minus b to the r is divisible by a minus b, And since A is congruent to B mod N, we know that A minus B is a multiple of N. And so therefore, A to the R minus B to the R is KN times this other leftover stuff. And so it's a multiple of N. And that's what a to the r congruent to b to the r mod n means. So uh, we have these congruence arithmetic rules. And I want to apply them to uh, this old algorithm of casting out 9. So just, just as a reminder, suppose your number is 387. And you want to know, is 387 divisible by 9? Well, you add up the digits. You take 3 plus 8 plus 7, which is 11 plus 7 is 18. And then you add up those digits, and you get 1 plus 8, and that's 9. And um, the rule is, if, if, if the sum of the digits in this way is 9, then your number is 
divisible by nine. And in fact, 387 is a nine times 43. On the other end, if you take a number like 342, oops, that's also divisible by nine. Let's take 345. So here you would get three plus four plus five, which is seven plus five, which is 12. And then you add those numbers, you get one plus two, which is three. Well, you may know that that means that 345 is divisible by three, but it's not divisible by nine. So why does this work? Well, it works because uh, of place value. So let's remember what 387 is. It's three times 100 plus eight times 10 plus seven times one. Or in other words, it's three times 10 squared plus eight times 10 to the one plus seven times 10 to the zero. And of course, it needs one other fact, not a very complicated one, which is that 10 is congruent to one mod nine. Because of course, 10 minus one is nine. And so 10 is congruent to one mod nine. So now we can use our congruence arithmetic and we see that every power of 10, so 10 squared, is also congruent to 1 mod 9. And so uh, we have that multiplying both sides of this equation by 3, we get 3 times 10 squared is congruent to 3 mod 9. That's this first term. And then we look at this number here and we see that 8 times 10 is congruent to 8 mod 9. And of course, 7 times 1 is congruent to 7 mod 9. This should be a 9. And now we use our addition of congruences rule, and we see that the left-hand side, 3 times 10 squared plus 8 times 10 plus 7 times 1, is congruent to 3 plus 8 plus 7 mod 9. And of course, this is, this is equal to uh, 18. And then we could repeat this argument. I mean, 18 is 8 plus 1 times 10, which is congruent to 8 plus 1 mod 9, which is congruent to 9 mod 9. And if you wanted, that's congruent to 0. So we've shown that this number 387 is actually congruent to 0 mod 9, so it's divisible by 9. The um, other interesting uh, fact about this is that casting out 9s doesn't just tell you if the number is divisible by 9, it actually computes what it's congruent to mod 9. So uh, if we go back to our 345 example, 345 is 3 times 10 squared plus 4 times 10, plus 5 times 1. 10 squared is congruent to 1, 10 is congruent to 1, and 1 is congruent to 1, so mod 9. So 345 is congruent to 3 plus 4 plus 5 mod 9, or 3 mod 9. I'm not going to write up a formal proof of this because, strictly speaking, we would have to deal with the fact that the numbers can be arbitrarily long, and, and the right way to do that is using mathematical induction, and we haven't covered that yet. But I hope this gives you the, the idea and so that you see why casting out nines works. If you want to have some fun, uh, you could. I'll give you a, just a, this a little thing to think about. 11 is congruent to minus 1 mod 9. Uh, sorry, <laughs> wrong way around. 10 is congruent to minus 1 mod 11. And the way you test for divisibility by 11, if you have 345, is you take the alternating sum of the digits. So you say 3 minus 4 plus 5, which is 3 minus 4 is minus 1 plus, which is 4, is not equal to 0 mod 11. And so 345 is not divisible by 11. So there's a divisibility test for 11 where you take the alternating sum of the digits. And that alternating sum has to do with this minus 1. And so I invite you to think about why that might be using the ideas that we discussed here, uh, using the fact that um, 10 
is congruent to 1 mod 9, but congruent to minus 1 mod 11.